You're looking at the slide, I think, same slide that I, I it started the first talk. Um, uh, and just in case some of you weren't there, I, I'd point out uh, some of the things that are there. Um, I, the yellow statement at the end, top there, was made by Hubert van Hickett, uh, the founder of Docomomo. Um, and it's uh, this sort of brief, if you like, that I think um, Adolf Loos, this architect from nearly 90 years ago, well, it is 90 years ago, whose main work was basically very large houses for people who, whose way of life sadly disappeared with the Second World War. Uh, how, how, how he should be relevant to that statement about um, the importance of modern architecture uh, was prompted me to, to, to want to talk about him. Uh, and the reason for talking about him, too, first thing is the dates you see of him there, 1870 to 1933, um, uh, that period and what was going on then. Um, and the thing that he was described by a number of people as a man with modern nerves. So um, before I pick up, I'm going to pick up with talking about his buildings from when he moved to Paris in 1923. But before we get there, I thought there ought to be a quick, quick, quick summary of what, what, what he was about. Um, I'm not going to read this out. I hope you can read it there. Um, the part I've mentioned in sort of yellow are the things that I think are particularly important to those who know who G. Sempe was and knew who Louis Sullivan was. I described some of that in the first, first talk. Um, the, the thing about uh, in, in the yellow statement, which I won't read, um, uh, basically it, it comes to what, 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 his, 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 what his main drive was as a man with modern nerves, um, which got him into trouble because he, he published a lot of pamphlets which I mentioned some of them there, um, uh, and a lot of argument in Vienna at the end of the 19th century. Um, uh, the, as well as the pamphlets, he had a sort of free school, which um, I've been doing a bit more research on since last time, we'll, we'll, we'll come to, but it's, it's, it's that his, his statements made after 1908, which then got published and read during the war when um, uh, Le Corbusier was, um, uh, um, not, not directly involved in the world, but involved in, in collecting um, materials and stuff to rebuild housing afterwards, but got involved with Oz and Fant and really launched himself with uh, Verzen architecture. The, 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 the whole drive of Verzen architecture owes a lot to the writing that Lowe's did earlier, but I think a lot of people know that already. Um, uh, tonight I'm going to talk, uh, pick up with the later was the Maison Zara for the poet um, uh, it was in Paris, uh, and an unbuilt house for the dancer Josephine Baker, and the Muller House, on a, uh, which is the last house he did in Vienna, uh, and the Werkbund uh, Exposition, which there was in Vienna, he did two semi-detached houses there. Uh, along the way, there are some other buildings I'm going to refer to, but that's basically what this talk is going to be about. Um, uh, I also want to go on because what is really interesting is um, uh, what he meant to the people who worked with him and who were students in his informal school, uh, and in particular, Rudolf Schindler. Uh, and I, on the end of this talk, I'm going to talk about Rudolf Schindler's arrival in America because it sort of mirrors the birth, if you like, of Loos's uh, ideas from his arrival and departure in America. Um, uh, I'm listing here the, a few books that, that, that have been published on this subject. There are umpteen books on those, but, but in recent years, there, there, there are a couple by Christopher Long who, who, who deals very much with what I'm going to go through this evening, this one called New Space and Movement in Viennese Architecture, where, he, where he's written about, as well as Lowe Strand and, and Joseph Frank. Um, and a second book, which was done with someone from uh, Prague, who has researched the archive, uh, the Los archive, and produced more information. Uh, a lot of it on on the sort of, on the people who were involved in um, being students, <coughs> and and later become architects. I've got a, on this list here in red the buildings I'm going to talk about. And down at the bottom, uh, the, the, the people mentioned there: Hannik Kulka, Gerlich, uh, Karl de Hotter, Blatter Neumann, Jean Veltz, Kurlanger. Uh, were, were all, 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 all people who, who, who 
because of the, the, the events that went on then, were sort of scattered around the world in the late 1930s because they were mostly Jewish and architects and, and they went to various places like South Africa or Australia or <coughs> um, to keep out of the way. Um, and people who were students but who went on to be, uh, as well as, as Schindler, Richard Neutra and Ernst Freud, who, who were clearly influenced by his, his, his work. Right, now, uh, where I left off last time with this picture that um, I found very interesting, <laughs> uh, it comes from one of the books, but anyway, it shows this bunch of people in uh, 1926 <coughs> outside what Judy Loach tracked down to be this place where they sold artists' materials near to the Dome Café on Montparnasse in Paris. Um, and I've listed on there that most of them were painters, but Adolf Loos uh, and his student... Um, Neumann and were there at the back talking in this group of, of uh, men all dressed in suits and ties, um, uh, uh, clearly late in the evening um, uh, and they've come from the, the dome and it's in August so it's been fairly hot. So the man on the stream right there is, is Piet Mondrian um, and, and, and he's got his hat on which I mean I think he's probably been out for the day because it be, being August um, uh, they're, they're all they're all smoking but um, uh, the two architects have sort of got rather got their back to Mondrian who at 1926 was I mean really pivotal and the, the still arriving and, and his studio uh, was close by uh, in Montparnasse the studio was in a really dingy road called the Rue de Depart, which is long since gone because of the expansion of the station. Um, uh, but it would have been a short walk to where the last thing was. Uh, and it was in an area of that sort of condition. He occupied the bit with the lean-to roof on the first floor. That, this next photo is through that and into the courtyard to where he lived, where you enter on the right. Um, and there he is, uh, in, in, uh, he's a more generally presented himself rather than the rather, uh, the place of him having had drinks and meeting people outside, with his Hitler moustache looking very rather strict and, 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 and stern. Um, I, I put the first photo in because he clearly wasn't like that. Um, his, his flat, although it no longer exists, has been uh, restored and, and, and looked into by the people who are into the still. And you can see there he occupied this first floor flat that had one room you could just about sleep in, and then the angled room with the north light um, going round the corner, which he used as his studio. And the bit on the right is the same drawing photo, I don't show a photo now, photo um, that people have taken of that, and they superimposed colour on, because what was so interesting about Mont Mondrian's studio where he lived was it was almost like one of his, it was a house, like one of his paintings, that, that they were all over that, and his, he, he you can see the stove to heat it there. He also is reputed to have had a wind-up gramophone record and 1678s uh, of jazz records that he'd collected, and that while he was thinking working, he would play these records in, 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 in sequence while, 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 while he was in there. I, I, I say all this because we're going to come... Uh, in this period that uh, Lowe's came to the end of his work, um, that, that's very much the, the, the context. Um, this is a repeat of uh, a slide, I apologise to those who've seen it before, but basically what I'm going to talk about is uh, the freestanding houses that he designed, and this is a series of them here, and it shows that, that basically they were freestanding with their external walls being the main structure, uh, and that within those structures, um, Loos would manipulate the levels of the floors, either in quarters or fours of the, of the footprint area of, of the house, and that was his basic mode of, 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 I won't say designing, but it is technologically uh, that he could investigate and, and go through designing in space, which was what his, his great um, virtue, I would say, is. Right, uh, to go on to the houses now, um, when we, we look at them, I'm going to tell you first of all who the client was and what they did. Uh, then I'm going to show a list of names of people who they were clearly friendly and knew uh, and, and, and that Loos would have known as well. So uh, jumping down that list, you can see that Zara, the, the Zadaist poet, he would have known, well, clearly André Breton, the, the main leader of, 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 of Dada and Surrealism. Um, but Josephine Baker was in there, and Arp from Twitter was a friend who knew Man Ray, uh, and Hugo Ball, who was an American artist. Um, now, the house he had was a house, but it also had a separate flat with it. Uh, and it had a footprint of 10 by 17 metres. I'm, I'm saying that because that gives you the scale that most of the, that it works at, which is 
much larger than... Uh, it happened to be on eight levels, okay? Uh, I'm going to now have a, have, a, have a look at it. Um, uh, the right-hand picture is the rear elevation of it. In the top left-hand corner, you've got a section, and I'll start with the section. In that photo, you're looking at this elevation on this side here. Uh, it's on a site that is very hilly, and you can see that in the section, stepping away from the bit you see in the photo, backwards up, so that there being eight levels in it, um, you go through three levels before you get to the level, which is the basic house part. Um, so uh, you can't quite tell levels on the photo, but as we go through these things, they'll, they'll, they'll become clearer to you. So you go through three levels, and the main living area is on this level I'm arrowing here, I won't give it a number, with bedrooms above uh, and a, a terrace above that. Orig originally, it was designed that that last story would be a full height story. So where you see the photo on the right of the elevation, those two peekaboo sort of ears that stick out the top, it was actually intended that be completed up as a full, full floor um, above. Um, I, I've got the eight levels here, and I'm not going to go through telling what happens on each level here. I'm going to go on and try and explain it to you as clearly as I can. Um, these are diagrams, right. Now, the diagram you've got here basically shows the main living area on the third floor that I, I showed you before. It has a large salon here, which faces out across the back, which I'll tell you about in a second, across the terrace. This square here is the dining area. Um, the bits you see behind here are, are the means of access from the street down below here. So that, 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 that area there is behind that door there. And going down to this diagram there, there's a staircase that takes you up. And in the section you see here, you, 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 if, you come, if you approach the house from that side, the lower side, you would go up through that staircase before you arrived at the main salon there. And, the, and, the, and there's a route which I'm going to go through and, and explain and talk to you about um, for you to achieve that. But before we go there, um, if it had been built as it had been built, uh, it's fairly, you can see that it's controlled by geometric dimensions, that, that you have a square at the bottom that's set, and that it was to be a square above for the, for the upper part, that uh, within the, the main part of the house, it's divided into three dimensions across the section, the dining, the salon, and the terrace outside. The, the three, the number three comes in there. Um, this now shows you the rear side where we've gone up the hill. It's completely different from the side from, from the street below. And beside it, I've got a little plan. I'll describe where this is in a second. But the shaded area is the footprint of this house. And what I've been talking about is the entrance on this side. is on this side here, which is the lower part of the road that's there. Uh, this side here, where it's stepped back, opens onto a, a square. I've got out of sequence, haven't I? Opens onto a square here. There's an open square that's having with steps up a bit further up the street so you can get to the square there. So you can enter the house from this, that side as well as the other side at the back. It's located in Montmartre, uh, the Sacre Coeur Church, the cimetière. The, on this road here, Kirby Road, if I can spot it uh, and, and do it for you. I've lost it on my map, anyway. Uh, it's between the two, so you, there's a hill that rises up here, and, and, and the road there, repeated, um, occurs in this area here. It cur curves around, curves around there. Um, that thing I've shown you a bit bigger, so I can clear back to that one. We've seen with the entrance from the, 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 uh, the uh, square side to the rear. Um, an axonometric showing that, but from above. So you, 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 you come in, you can come in from below there, under a terrace, and up to the main living area there. This, this, that terrace is over this bit here. Um, you can now see that, that, that um, the dining area, that's the dining area at the back there, and there's this lovely entrance from the rear up here. Um, to go on to that level, we, we, we could see this um, a, a bit, bit more clearly. Um, the, lower, the lower part of the in-between floors is basically from, from the staircase from the back here, where the garage is below, which was too narrow to get a car in, but near his garage, uh, is, is servant and, and cook's quarters. So the dining area is to the back, and, that, and this is storage here, and, and a way of getting through, so that the, the 
dining area is, is there, uh, and you come up here because you have servants who've lived in the, in, in, in the park below. Um, on, on, on this side, the dining area has a window to this other side here. So you do have through light of view right across. You can orientate yourself to the two, the shift in, 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 in the hill. There are two smaller areas to the sides of these. Uh, one is a little office, um, and the other is a kitchen area, I think, if I've got it right, uh, with storage for the, for the dining. Um, uh, here is a view of the salon, which is this large space. So Zara could hold court or read his poetry or have you. He brought this rather eccentric collection of, of, of furniture. But you can see that the scale of the room and the light that comes from the square at the back where it's quiet and you've got the view out. But at the same time, looking back the other way, the, the, the dining area up there has a light from the street there. So, so these different sized spaces um, lead one to the other and moving up. That's from the dining area looking across the, the um, salon below. So uh, th th there's this thing of, a, of, a, of uh, being a step like that. Um, well, actually, that relationship, though, on a smaller scale, you'll find in Anna Goldfinger's um, house in Willow Road um, on, a, on, a, on a much scale, smaller scale. This is quite a large scale house. So if you go back to the section, um, the, 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 the round plan nature and the thing of, 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 of transferring through and in um, is because of the transition of how you go up these stairs and spaces are slowly revealed as you come up into the main area, social activity here, where in the world, which is quiet at the back before you go on up to the, 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 the part above. Um, uh, on the level, uh, I'll go back to the section. Uh, on this level above here, uh, he had his own little study, did Zara, where he did his, 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 his writing. And this is shown on plan here, uh, which you get to um, again through the outside or internally through, through the inside. He has an area here where he sits, and I've got a picture of that. Here, here he is with his, his own world, which again is lit, light is already penetrating from the top, and that relates back to the, the, the main social areas. Um, uh, that, I think, is about what I wanted to say about, I'd say about that. I've not, I, 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 it, the, the, the route from the garage area up through uh, is, 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 is rather, rather nice, but not nearly as good as the two other houses that I'm going to show you later on. Um, the next one I was going to talk about was the unbuilt scheme for Josephine Baker, 1927. Josephine Baker came at the, I think it was uh, in 19, after the war, World War anyway, with, with a troop um, from uh, America uh, and, and introduced jazz, the Charleston um, singing, and was absolutely raved about by people in the arty world in, um, in, in Paris. Um, I'm showing her, she was most famous for this dance she did dressed only in a dress of bananas. Um, I've shown that quite small. Um, next to it, I've shown a rather larger drawing of her. Um, uh, that, 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 this is by a uh, sculpture by Alexander Calder, the American, he was an American engineer who then became a, a sculptor. And, and we know him for these colored mobiles that in the 50s and 60s seemed to spread everywhere like Moors and uh, Barbara Hepworth. But before that, he spent quite a bit of time in Paris. And he did do, if you ever can get to see them, these sculptures uh, that are made pin out of wire. They're absolutely magnificent. And they're, they're all full of, they're, they're full of movement, both the movement of drawing and, and, and the movement of things actually moving. Um, and, and this one, it's, it's absolutely the way that, 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 that Josephine Baker, the, the, the dancing and effect of it, captivated both people like, um, well, Corbusier, um, uh, knew her as, 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 as well as Loth. Um, now, uh, this house that he designed for her um, uh, was, I'll show you again a map of Paris, and if I could tell you where he is, um, if, if, if that's the Arc de Triomphe, um, and that's over there, Pal Pal Mayo, uh, it's on a road that runs here, Bogart. It was never built, but a very grand road in the 16th arrondissement of Paris, all right? Uh, she clearly was extremely famous and made a good deal of money at, at, at that time. Whether she could have afford a house on the scale that I think, I've got its dimension somewhere. No, they'll come in a minute, I think. 
Yes, I have them there up there. Uh, on, on a scale of a site that is 26 and a half metres by 12, nearly 13 metres, uh, on a road that goes up to the heights of these rather grand, well, these grand Parisian um, boulevard roads. So uh, it was a house for a, uh, an extremely expensive large site. And it came out like that. It, it never got beyond the model or the um, floor plan stage. Uh, um, she, she, was, she is on, on record as saying that Loth, she, uh, she being a dancer, thought that, that Loth's dancing actually was the best dancing she'd seen in, in Paris, so it's, so it's recorded somewhere. Um, he clearly appreciated her, her dancing. And the idea of, uh, well, the idea of this house is, 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 is around um, a grand salon, as we've seen in the Zara house, which is actually in this model to the rear uh, at this a, a le a level up here. Um, the bit that's blank here with lots of stripes on is, is a pool that's surrounded by a sort of, it has glazed sides or windows in the side, and you can walk right round the pool. And this bit with the staircase that goes up here is a grand staircase. And if I show you this in, in plan, um, it's easiest to understand starting at the top. Uh, there are, hang on, however, there are a number of levels in this. I've, I've got a number of them here. Oh, nine levels in this, all right, rather than four, which makes them difficult to describe. But here we go. Um, four levels. Um, so if we start at the top, it's got this pool that takes up a, a, a volume here. And you can see in, in this, in this organisation for a house, um, it follows the patterns that involved that, that there is a load-bearing external wall right round the outside. Uh, and then that again is divided in half, because it's got, but divided into quarters in this one because, it is, uh, because of the footprint being so large. It's because it's part of that terrace and that part of Paris, this wall and this wall are un, well, there's, just, there's one window there, but for most of these nine levels, um, there's absolutely no access on that side. So all, all light and access comes from the other two sides. So the access uh, uh, is from below um, through the, 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 the tower, up a magnificent staircase through a number of these levels, past the side of the pool, um, I've, I've, I've jumped down to the second floor now, um, to the, where there's this grand salon, and at the end there's a circular stair, a semicircular staircase that takes you up to the dining area at the top and the cafe, uh, and there's a special service lift. Uh, there is our two uh, equal-sized bedrooms with dressing and bathroom all on that level. Um, on the lower levels, it's all servants and a garage for the car. Because um, it wasn't fully resolved. Um, there are clearly uh, issues on, on building a pool um, like that, I think, with an extremely heavy load of water uh, in that sort of section. And how far that ever went with an engineer, I don't know. But here's some three-dimensional drawings um, of what goes on there. Uh, again, like it, it, the, 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 the sequence of spaces you do upstairs uh, to, 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 to greet and be greeted, uh, and then the, uh, the Grand Salon is, 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 is a familiar theme uh, for an opulent house of this side. Uh, I've got more plans of that in more, more detail. Um, um, I'll go on to the Moller House, which is in Vienna and was built for Hans Moller and his wife. He was um, an extremely wealthy, uh, he had a cotton in, in Israel already. He had a uh, cotton business there and imported to Europe and manufacture. So he and his wife uh, built this house in Vienna, which is, again, it's in a suburb. I haven't got a plan of where, where it is. What, what I've got there is pictures of it, models of it. Um, it's in a suburban street, in a, a very grand suburban street, and the hills, not the woods, but the hills of Vienna, quite near where there's uh, Karl Frank and other, they did quite, quite grand houses there. The, the model stands for itself. Um, this is its street elevation uh, in that suburb, on that street. As you can see, it's a sloping, it's on a hill sideways to the, 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 the house, fronts directly onto the, onto, onto the street in this front. Uh, and uh, again, like the Zara house, you, you can see it, 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 it's fairly plain. It's rendered this time with one rectangle projecting out. That rectangle, actually, in plan when we get to it, the part enclosed by that area there is described as the living area, right? Living room, which we'll see uh, is rather anomalous from the way these days we would describe um, a living room. The rear of the house is more conventional. It changes from being three to three doors. It, the, 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 the car park is, held, is in the, sorry, do the boring bits first. Uh, the car park is there right round. So you dr drive 
sorry, the car park is under, under there where there's a terrace, a living room floor, a bedroom floor, a terrace and guest room. So quite conventional in section uh, for, for a, a large bourgeois house. Um, Again, it shows got a large, large garden. It's, uh, I have been in this house when it's owned now by the Israeli government, and, 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 and to see it, I mean, we, were, we were escorted by guards. Um, anyway, uh, to go through it, um, two plans. Um, one, the entrance level here, and one uh, more than one level above that. So, for, as you saw in the picture of the entrance, it's very symmetrical, simple, straightforward, uh, middle of the, of, the, of the square, basically square plan, but you can see it's divided into quarters on each level if you pick out the structural walls. Um, as, as you enter, you're, you're confronted with blank doors behind which are various maids and, and service areas. Um, for you as a guest to the house, you're invited to turn immediately 90 degrees and to enter up a few, steps past a window on the outside to a reception area where there's a mirror on the wall uh, and you can disrobe, you use a toilet. Um, you then, there's a secondary staircase that goes on that takes you on up the house. These rooms here um, are mostly service areas. That, that staircase that you've come up is this one here with a, with a dot. Um, uh, you come back going on the same access as you did when you were, entered the house from the street, and you enter an area they call the hall, which is this area here. It's actually, um, uh, it, it, it's full of, it has, it's lined by staircases. Um, uh, and immediately behind you is this area here, which is seated, which is called the living room area. And off that to the side there, there is a library, up another set of steps there. Um, through to this side, this side is doored off, and there are pocket doors, two sets of pocket doors. This set here opens to, guess what? Those of you who were at the first talk will know what this room's going to be. Um, it's a music room, right? And it has a piano in it. Uh, the music room, which is the largest room in the house. So the, 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 the sequence of uh, ascending these staircases uh, is slowly familiarizing you with the inhabitants. Uh, 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 and if they were, they were, if they were having a, a concert there, then, then that area called hall is a sort of milling area before you can go there. This side is the dining room there. So if it was a dining occasion, uh, and not one with, a, with music being performed, and it was perhaps more of a family thing, um, you could go direct to that, 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 that room there. Um, they, are they are on steps here. This side here is up half a level, so there's a level change in the middle here, as, as the same as we saw in, in, in Zara's house and Goldfinger had in his. Um, uh, these, when you're in these rooms, you can see over at, at very angles, angles out. Um, I try not to stick to too many drawings. I try to get, to get you going around the house uh, properly. Um, uh, above that, the level above, you go up to bedrooms with uh, quite lavish bedrooms um, and to a top area where there's a studio for the, the uh, uh, another room with a roof terrace which is, is there. Um, th this is that in section. Um, and this is this area, the living room area, which is this area which slightly sticks out, which is couched all around the outside, which has views out to the street and views through, through to the other rooms below and views through to the, the terrace uh, on the outside, which is slightly higher, that said. So there are these shifts in levels uh, within it. Uh, and this, what you're going to see next is a photo standing in this area where you've just entered through the entrance, um, where you've, you've arrived, and this is where you take your, clothes, your hat off and, and the mirror you can see yourself, and that is the way that takes you up to the, the music, all, all, the, all the ones above. Now this, you can see here that, this, that the walls that are here in have been penetrated in this one, so, so you get this inkling of views and things going on. And this is the flow of space that, 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 that Los is, was so inventive with doing. The, 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 the process of, of carrying out the things you do in your home uh, with sequences that are shifting slightly all the time. They're not fully open and flowing, as Corby said. They, 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 they all have a purpose and a sort of meaning, if you like. Uh, for habiting, inhabiting uh, your, your residence, um, 
and you've been fortunate enough and have money to afford to do that. I've blown the plans up a bit here because it's almost impossible to describe it. If you go in these things, then you, you, you feel these sequences. But I, I'm trying to convey them to you with the only means available to me at the moment, which are drawings uh, and, 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 and photographs. Uh, that's this area I've just described to you in detail there. Um, here, uh, here's a photo of this area where this rather, when I saw it, it had this terrible blue upholstery. Um, Terrible blue upholstery uh, as an experience I've had before. Um, Frank Lloyd Wright's Taliesin, the end of his life, is covered with shag pile carpet, this color. Um, uh, difficult to live with, I think, but anyway, never mind that. Um, uh, uh, I've got a photo of different colors in it. This is the, the living room area, anyway, with a view out to the road below. And this is the sort of hall area. So, as well as being this area where you can mill, it's got tables for you to sit, uh, and it's got these sort of shelves and, and uh, pieces of wall everywhere, uh, and, and, uh, um, and where you might expect there to be walls, there are walls sometimes. Th that this is a view from you just arriving from having come up the sequence I described to you. This is a view standing in the same position but rotating yourself 370 degrees. So here's the music room ahead of you. Uh, another part wall and steps up to the dining room, which is slightly higher on the other side, and the way on up here, which is to the bedrooms above. So. In this sort of space, you can imagine the general sort of joining together or separating or exchanges that would go on between the members of the family and the servants that they would have. So the, 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 the aligning of these spaces is, is, is part of that, all those rituals. Um, uh, a, a further view looking backwards from the, up to the bedroom level, back to the library to the side. Um, uh, an older view, here, here the upholstery is something perhaps easier to live with than that blue. Well, to me, that's my taste, but, but uh, Lois was, was quite, quite happy if you have bad taste within your, your house, if, if that's what you wanted. But anyway, anyway here's uh, the, the, the couch where you would sit in there. And here's one of these walls where you could put, put things down with a radiator underneath it. So the, the design is thought all the way through uh, these planes that exist within. Them. I'm going to show you now the, the um, dining room uh, in various, this is fa fairly recent format, uh, lined, uh, viewed from the music room with mirrors and lights, the sort of soft light that you get from the main area. That's a, a colored view. That's an earlier view in black and white. There you'll notice the steps. You, the steps are done in a different way. I think there was a way of, you could either have these little steps in between, which um, if, if, if you wanted to sort of limit the number of people going in and out of each room, you, you could do that, or, or you could have them with Lots of steps like that. There's a, there's a full dining um, uh, set out for dining with um, <coughs> full steps in between. You could change those. And, and with a wood panelling so that the atmosphere in these rooms, while they're fairly large, the, 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 the use of the timber has changed from the walled surfaces of the smaller spaces. Uh, because at the same time as you're going up and down these steps, your ceilings are altering as well. So the volume you were in and the color and the material that they are made of was carefully chosen. And in these larger social spaces, the, uh, here they're, they're, they're using these magnificent um, veneers. They've got uh, a reverse view uh, from the dining area into the music room as a, as a sort of um, a, a, a living room as we would we, we would we would use it again a clear story window above the 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 the, the, the um, rationing and manipulation of light is 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 I think very sophisticated an earlier view of that when it was a music room with the piano in okay and the other sorts of steps um, uh, short view through to the, the steps up to the bedrooms above uh, the upper upper levels above the bedroom. I don't think there's too much to say about those uh, a reminder of what happened. Uh, on the outside with the simple walls. Um, I'm going to go on now to um, a couple of uh, houses that um, fit together uh, for the work that was done in uh, Vienna in 1930. The, these were built after Lose had died and, and, and built by Neumann, um, a pair of much smaller scale houses. But nevertheless, um, have I, I haven't said what the footprint is, I've better they, they are a bit smaller. Um, uh, they're, they're, they're bigger than they look from the outside. That you, you get a basement that steps down in, um, and you get uh, the middle level is 
nearly four, meter, four meters odd, so that you can actually, in the middle level, uh, you can, uh, the levels within the overall space uh, can expand and be used differently. So if you look at it three-dimensionally, once you've come into this house uh, and you enter here through the living room, you know, the living room has, at the back here, an alcove. Sorry. Uh, an alcove, which I'll show you a picture of in a minute. Uh, but if you go up the stairs, they curve at the back of the living room, and there is a sort of balcony which hangs out over this, which seems amazing. But, but the main part of the living room is this, is this bigger height here. Other than that, you, that, this, that sort of space, it's fairly conventional um, house, house design. Uh, you can see here that there's a sort of sitting area at this end, and this alcove here with a seat, um, and a staircase with a winder that goes up, kitchen at the back. Um, the bedrooms above. The bedrooms above do have terrace that they, they open out onto. But it's this, this balcony area that is uh, extraordinary about these fairly uh, basic, simple. Uh, um, it, it, it's less, uh, on a lower budget, um, seeing what you can get out. And when you, when you, when you see this, um, and you, uh, as people have my generation will not have seen this, but have been in the unites that Corb did. The, the notion of a living space which had spaces off it like this, where you could, if you're part of a family, um, uh, be on your own and do anything. Um, uh, in the era before we had television and the internet and stuff, um, the, the, the life of interacting or being apart and um, is accommodated for within one volume space. Uh, that's the alcove at the back, so that, that's where, where you would sort of eat with a staircase running round it. Um, uh, uh, only two of these were built, but um, I'm going to talk about one which wasn't built. Um, that's a view from the uh, balcony above down into this double height building space. Um, I'm going to talk about one that was only discovered in the, in, in the records recently, which is um, uh, the same efforts going on again at, 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 at a low budget. This is a, um, an unbuilt project house for a house. I'm going to, uh, very few drawings of it exist, but it's basically a square plan. Um, and the square plan has, is divided in the middle by a structural wall so that you have volumes that are smaller on this side and volumes that are bigger there. So that in section, uh, on once that's the wall up the middle, you have, uh, uh, smaller volumes, and on the other side, larger volumes. Um, and what goes on in these volumes is manipulated by staircases or parts of staircase. If that's the entrance there, uh, that's down, down into that, which is a sort of cellar area up below. Um, when you come in, you go up half, which brings you at a level like that to that floor level in the bigger volume. And that's the living part that goes, can go up double height elevation of it here. Um, and when you're in that, you can go up a staircase that swaps round the wall in between very ingeniously, going up the building to the upper levels where there are bathrooms and bedrooms on this side. I haven't quite worked out how all this works, <laughs> but here's the sections a, a bit bigger. But, but the round plan and the sequence of the, of, of the spaces um, is um, quite, quite in, in, intricate. Um, he did do two models of these. There, there, a lot of these were explored by the students and the staff that he worked with um, as to how you could have interlocking spaces of different sizes that, that, that work, as I've just described in both the Muller uh, and, and, and I'm coming to the Muller house in a minute, the next one, uh, which was the final one I and mean, which is probably the, the, the best uh, one that he did. Um, this, this, anyway, what you're looking at now w w was, was, was never built. But um, this house in Prague um, was built um, and was built for Frederick Muller, who was a building contractor. So uh, he knew what he wanted and how much it would cost and how it would all turn out, um, and, 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 and his, his, his wife. It's on a site, um, I put the drawing up first, because it's on a site on a hill. Uh, and, and the site posed problems, which I, I think were quite well solved. Um, uh, when it's done. Uh, the, 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 it, it's a, basically a, a cube shaped building uh, and it faces this way um, north, north. Uh, and this is a main road in Prague and this is a secondary road which joins a bit further on here. So the, the 
access to the house is on the top side of it from the top road at a low level underneath this slab here. And the house faces um, north, actually. I get my north point in the right way. Um, sorry, the house. Uh, no, yes, it faces, faces north, and it's south on the other side at the top of the hill. Um, so you have to enter on the south side. Um, going to that as a, as, as, as a plan, uh, there's a pedestrian route up here, um, the lower road, the upper road. Uh, you enter it on the corner here. Cars can drive in and down and tuck under the house there. The entrance to it is on the centre of that access there from the street, like, like the Moller house. The garden is situated round, falling down the hill on this side here. Um, and uh, that's a picture of Mr and Mrs Muller and uh, Loos and Neumann there and her on the roof terrace. Um, this is a section through that. So you can see how the hill drops down. Uh, and on the access side, um, the, 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 the main staircase and, and ways up. On the other side, as with the Tsara house and, and the other one we saw, um, the main living area with a larger height for the main salon type uh, living room, uh, bedrooms above and terrace on roof. So the, the, the sectional organization is the same as we've, we, we've just, just seen. Um, uh, but uh, these are uh, earlier photos. Of it. So from the, from the lower part, the garage is tucked, tucked, garage is tucked under here uh, at this at level here is, is the main salon level, and then the bedroom part above, looking out over the views, um, uh, away away from the city. Um, that again moving around here. There's a bay that sticks out, which we're familiar from the Moller House. This bay sticks out. Um, this you can see is on the sunny side. It's on the if I got my north, south, east, and west right, wrong, wrong. Um, this is the sunny side, the south side, the south beyond, but the southeast. It's a breakfast room, southeast facing that way and facing over the garden to the side. So it's, it's organised so that those things work. Um, Similar sort of view, but you can see that the, the, the hill and the geometry of the house that comes on the hill in, in its earlier existence. Uh, the garden part, so the garden part, part coming down here, the breakfast room, looking out over it. Um, the sun on this side, the shadow on the north side of the room for the views out. Um, and these windows, which are, you can see are, are, are lit there. Um, during the check, because uh, of, of, of history, uh, the, the Mullers um, uh, did survive, but they had to leave um, Prague and Czechoslovakia. Um, so the Germans came and then the Russians came. And this is a photo from the Russian period where the house existed and stayed, but got fairly, fairly dilapidated. Uh, you can see some of the rent had been to fall off. Um, this is back up to the uh, access road, upper roadside. So here's the entrance on the south side with a blank wall and these smaller windows. Uh, Main, main entrance on that side. So you can see it's a sort of reverse of the, um, of, of the Zara House and some of the other ones. Um, a detail of the entrance. Um, I've put this photo in here because here it is being constructed. It gives you a feeling there of the hill and how the house is oriented on the hill. You can see the way the land falls away on this side and on this side here, whereas on this other side, which is the sunnier side, um, uh, the hill rises up and it's less private. Um, uh, up here, going on, um, what you were looking at was from, from over here. So you enter it on this side here. And again, it's got this thing of the entrance. Immediately when you enter it, um, the, way, the way through is not ahead. <laughs> it's to one side, off on an axis that takes you through your, from your knowledge of having seen the thing from the outside, to sort of, you're going to approach the, the depths of the, the upper part of the house. This other part here is, is, is cloakroomy part, servanty area and uh, kitchen stuff. Um, uh, we've got, we've come in the entrance here, so you start going up, you, you, you go up that much of level before you're on the living room level, all right? Um, so it, it, it's, you, you come down into the entrance and then you come back up, and this is that a bit more clearly expressed. Um, uh, you, you're, you're on your journey to the, the center of the house, um, the other areas here through, that's the garage part, which is under the chairs above. Um, and again, service heating type things in this part here. And a dumb waiter because the kitchen part is, uh, 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 it goes 
um, all the way up. Um, that's that in a big, bigger detail. Um, you can see here that, that, that uh, when you come in the entrance, there's this sort of place where you can leave your clothes and a toilet, uh, and on, on up uh, an alternative way in. The, the route is not as revealing as the Moller House. Uh, it's more spread out, but you, 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 you ascend to these levels um, above to, to, the, to the center of the house. Um, when you eventually arrive here, um, I think I'll show you a diagram first. Um, you've come through on a journey like this that arrives at this area here. And this is the main salon. So if you're a guest and you've disrobed it and you arrive, you come up, you arrive in this area here, which has the views out to the south, north facing. Um, to one side here, there is this breakfast room with its bay to the garden, to that to the, the side there. And to this side here, this is the uh, kitchen, kitchen area that served separately from the side there. So to go back to the main plan, um, you get shifts in level between these three, three areas, but they're visible to and from each other um, uh, uh, and, and to the outside. Um, that's the spaces below. Uh, an axonometric, so you can see that. What happens here, because of the, the lie of the land, it means that from all these areas, you're, you're, you're fully aware of the view to the outside and the changes in light from the outside, um, because you can see through from one area to the other. Um, this is the, the, the lining of these spaces as the floor and the ceiling heights uh, alter as you, as you go up. Um, uh, here, marble is being introduced. As you get to the main salon area, um, when you arrive, you arrive at this area here. This is the Cipollina marble that was on the, uh, similar to the um, uh, Taylor's building in Vienna. Um, uh, and you can see how the, the, the ledges um, and the changes in level, the dining area up here. Um, and through here, there is a, a quieter sort of library sort of area where you're more sort of mashrabia like um, viewing and light to the space behind here, away from the, the dining area. And that's the sort of kitchen area part up there. Um, this, this, this one is the last one. It is fairly complex. The, the, what were the walls that lined and defined the spaces in, in the earlier houses? Clearly, part of this is done by structural frame. And people analyze that. that. That shows you in this rather expensive house how these, within the same, uh, the te technically, the, the building of the round plan with these spaces that flow one into another uh, uh, is improved through the use of concrete. That's the dumb waiter rising up through um, the middle bit there. And just going on through the materials of the living spaces of this house. Um, try and understand them a bit better. Um, the, the dining room one and the next on a metric of how the stairs go on up. Um, the next area is this sort of library area, which if you look at this area in here, which is the last one of this that, that looks over it, where you get this library with its curtains drawn, but it, 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 it's an extremely intimate sort of woodwork type space where, where the, these various things can be done. In color, again, colors are quite, and the veneers that are quite rich in here. Um, a drawing just explaining on that, the, the behind that, uh, again, I'm showing you three-dimensional drawings and photos which are taken from different points of view that are disorientating you. Uh, the diagram on this side is to remind you that there are axes that you, that the, the way things are lit from the outside, uh, that the, there are axes that orientate you within what may appear to be very complicated shifts in level, and, and, and it's the subtlety of the, the tying together of those things. It's, it's the mastery of the geometry of it that, that, that he was so good at. Um, somebody's drawing. Um, uh, a view of the inside of that, that very cosy space for collapsing, run around, doing whatever you do. Um, am I going backwards? No, it's right, it's up to the upper, upper level above um, the, the main staircase go, goes on up. Uh, above the, the main bedroom, again, has repeated the main view to the outside with its own, own, own terrace 
Um, there are flats here and you can transport things by the dumb waiter. It is quite a grand house. Um, on the top level, um, there's a sort of studio place where the, with another big terrace where quite vivid colours are employed. These, these have all now been restored and you, and you can go now and see this one. Um, but this terrace that we've got, we've got here. Um, uh, and here's the family of the, the, the young N Neumann, Neumann Los and the Mullers, the happy, happy Mullers, uh, for the short time they were able to live in their house. Um, this was, again, being 1932, this was, Los was 60, they, they, he had a, a, a get together there with the famous and the good, together with him sat in the middle and his, his last wife, Claire, back there. Um, um, that, that, that's a picture uh, of, of that time. I, it, it's quite I, and the first part of this lecture, I spent quite a bit of time talking about this man with modern nerves and things, and, and, and clearly he communicated with people directly through conversation and writing. And, and, and I thought that this is quite near the end of his life. Chap, he's getting shame, but, but, but you can see there that he's holding forth, and you can see the woman next door. Um, she, she, she's entertained by something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, no, no. Uh, when, 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 I'm, I'm going to go on a bit now. Um, uh, uh, he died in, in, in 33. Um, uh, I wanted to talk a bit about Rudolf Schindler because Rudolf Schindler uh, and Neutra both were taught by Loos. Um, they were both very keen on Frank Lloyd Wright uh, and, and, and the, 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 the um, Loos's uh, love of things American uh, in, in all respects. Um, they, 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 they latched on to that. Um, Schindler, being slightly older, managed to get to America in 1913-14, uh, before the war. Uh, Neutra didn't get there till 1921. Um, uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about Schindler because, um, uh, and one, the first building that Schindler designed and built in America. Um, which is, which is uh, in, its, in its relationship with where the Lowe's design is very different and yet very the same in, 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 quite in ways that I'd like to draw to your attention. That's all. So I'm going to do a little bit of talk now about Schindler quickly. I think we're all right for time. Fine yes, for time. fine for time. OK, Here, here's a picture of Schindler, uh, two pictures of Schindler. The one on the left here is him on his way emigrating to America. He's this guy here with a hat and the moustache looking fairly confident and going, going forward. Uh, here he is in 1953, just before he died, um, uh, and he lived in this house that I'm going to show you uh, before. Um, uh, he, went, he worked for Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, he worked in various places. Actually, he worked in Chicago for a bit. He just did a crematorium. Uh, uh, and then he worked for Wright, and he, Wright clearly used him when, when Wright was doing his uh, work in Japan on the Imperial Hotel, but had this difficult client, uh, Barnsdale, in Los Angeles, this wealthy woman uh, who kept changing her mind. Um, uh, uh, Rudolf Schindler was the man he sent to Los Angeles to, to um, uh, sort all these things out. Um, and things got built there, and they got done there. Um, uh, um, Schindler him, himself, um, while he was well, well, he was there. Uh, th this is a view of his wife, Pauline Gibbon, who, who was uh, in Chicago, lived in Chicago, uh, worked in Hull House, which was this uh, um, organization that was putting forward uh, views on all sorts of subjects. And I've got a quote there. Uh, that I've got a quote from a friend of hers um, uh, writing um, about um, what Pauline Schindler, well, Pauline Gibbons as she was then, but she came Pauline Schindler said, and she had these dreams um, of, the, of the little joy of a bungalow on the edge of a wood, wood mountains near a, crowd, near a crowded city, which should be open just as some people's hearts are open uh, to friends of all classes and all types. I should like it to be democratic, a meeting place like Hull House, which, where, she, where she'd worked, um, where millionaires and laborers and professors, illiterates, um, uh, the splendid and the ignoble met and constantly got together, which is, um, and you can see there she is in her full flowing outfit. And, 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 and California was the place where these sort of things, okay, uh, seemed to end up. And I want to now show you a short piece of film of uh, uh, Los Angeles 
1923. It's from a Buster Keaton film called uh, Sherlock Jr. But I'm showing it to you because it shows you what um, uh, Chicago was like in 1923, which is when Schindler went there. How do I, I have to start it racing. Yes. This, what? Los Angeles. Sorry, what did I say? Wrong again? This is Buster Keaton stuck on a, the, on the front of a motorbike, uh, uh, and he's being chased by a gang. Um, when you, they're going down um, a suburban street in the middle, below the Hollywood Hills, um, uh, these streets uh, in 1923. So the layout was there, all right? Layout, and the suburban houses were growing up in this way. And you could see the dimensions of the streets, the layouts of the houses, the space between things, the car roads that were there first. Um, Anyway, um, more streets and more cars uh, and electricity, right? This, this, that it's still fairly raw. At uh, the nodes where you get petrol stations there, the gas, petrol, this is again towards the hills. Right, and this is, what you're looking at now is King's Road in the Hollywood Hills, and this is the house that Schindler built on this site. The, the site there on this rather open area, and behind it, those hills, the Hollywood Hills, it, there's Laurel Canyon is just up the road there, which in the 60s is quite a famous place. Uh, that gives you an idea of, oh, hang on, I'm going backwards here. Right, this is a still photo of Schindler's site, which you just saw with the house finished, right? Uh, and and uh, uh, this is them, it's, it's about to be built, uh, and I, before I show you the house, uh, I just remind you, this is, this is Schindler and Pauline Gibbs on their honeymoon in Yosemite, camping, all right, camping. Um, and here they are in the house, once it's built, this is on the left, uh, we're Schindler and Gibbs. You notice their dress, the right, the casual, froppy, free-moving type clothes with their, their parents and their son, Mark, um, so the, the two grandparents and, and the aunt, I think, the sister of, of Pauline, they're in the house, which you can see is made up out of concrete slabs. Um, uh, this house is, was, was, was a bungalow. Um, you won't understand it fully for that plan, but I'm going to, sh to use that plan to show you what it was all about. Um, you, you saw, again, the... The, 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 the piece of land that's on. This is the road here, King's Road. Immediately opposite here, not in the film and not in this photo, was a, a house by Irving Gill, um, the Dodge House, which has since been demolished, but which was cubic and very simple, um, and was the first house to have a vacuum system, pipes built into it. Um, uh, uh, Irving Gill is, was an important person. Um, anyway, back to Shindo and his whatever he built here. Um, uh, what he built here was um, a single-story series of rooms, um, and there you, uh, you may not be in, you may not be able to decipher on there quite how they work. But it basically, I say the road you were on is over here, and the plot is this rectangle here. You enter it from the road. You can enter it at both ends, uh, and that's the same drawing again. You can enter it at that end or this end. Um, if you enter it that end. You arrive back here, there's a road, there's a place where you can park, and there's a, there's a garage. Uh, stay put. Right. The garage. Uh, uh, and from the garage, there's the entrance to one house, which is an L-shaped patio house with a room and a room and, uh, uh, and a bathroom and storage and a stair to the roof. Um, the letters on that stand for the four people who lived there. Uh, this is Clyde Chase, who was a builder and helped build it. This is his wife. Um, if you, next to them there, there is a kitchen uh, and there's another separate dwelling, a room, that you can let out for people, for guests. Uh, the kitchen and there's another bathroom there. If you enter the plot from this side, there is an entrance here where there's two rooms at right angles to each other. Uh, RMS, Rudolf, Master of the World, Schindler, um, and Pauline Gibbons, one there. So you've got two equal, equal size. Each person who's living there has uh, the same sized space themselves. There aren't any children arrived yet. I mean, we saw a child who did arrive eventually. Um, but but uh, on and off, um, Rudolf Schindler and Pauline 
lived in this house together and separately <laughs> over a long period of time. Um, to make that a bit clearer, I've colored up this one. This is a colored description of um, uh, what, what, what goes on there. The red being the Clyde Chase part and the, gre the, the, other, the red stripies being the Clyde Chase and the guest part and this side being the Schindler part. Um, so outside, they each have um, a patio at the same level as the inside of their house. Uh, uh, there, that one on the front, there, there's the green bit. Um, and then beyond that, Neutra, who came to live there a bit later on, did this different level gardens that are our beyond. But the, 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 this is an extremely experimental, all right? I don't think anybody, in terms of people living together, I don't think people have done this quite, something quite this simple before this point in time. Uh, um, it can spread out like that because there is room to do it. Um, and it was built with a system that had been developed by Irving Gill called a tilt slab. Um, and the bottom part is a women's club in the Hoya, which was Irving Gill's famous building where you, you, you cast your concrete thing and a great big piece of it uh, on the ground. And then you hoisted it up, boom, below my head. In two days, you had a wall. Um, Schindler and Clyde Chase said, OK, we can do this. But there's only us building this. They hadn't got the gear to do the rest. So the, the house is designed on panels that you cast on the ground that are heavy enough or light enough for two blokes uh, with a thing like this to lift up and, 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 uh, vertically. And that's what you see going on there. Um, between these panels, when they put them up, they didn't, because of the lining up of them and they're fairly crude because they cast them themselves, they, had, they put in glass strips between each. And that was the walls of the houses. And then, then above it, you had a timber roof, basically, on, 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 on top. Um, uh, that begins to show a bit of a picture of that. So this shows this a bit better. Um, the, the slabs are, are, are slopey, again, to reduce the weight over the height um, for them to lift them up. Um, uh, and they go up to the top, top where we'll go on to this one, they go up to the top that hold the roof. So you had a, a, a roof slightly higher, the main structure with shading on the sunny sides of the rooms. Uh, sticking out, uh, and the windows full height Japanese type screens, a slab that went straight to the outside. Um, and this was put together with joinery that um, Shinda devised in his system. Um, and that's a view uh, a bit later on in this house after it had matured a bit. Um, this is taken now, of course, the area that I've shown you in the film is completely covered and, and built over. Where this is taken from is, is a sort of six story apartment block that's next to this house now, but at least you take photos like this. Um, uh, that you could see here, this is the, the, the Clyde Chase side of it, actually, one, one room the panels there with the glass sheets in between. Um, they, they decided that um, when you wanted bedrooms, you had a staircase up and you had a sleeping porch, all right, because it's California and it's hot and sunny on, on the roof. So this is the Clyde Chase sleep. You slept up here in this open area on the top. Um, and that beyond is the, the other part of this. And the Schindler's one is over the other side. And this is their sleeping porch on top of that. Um, Closer to the thing, too, you can see the concrete panels and the other parts which are built with incredibly simple Japanese type um, glazing. Um, views of the outside, the different levels. Um, views of the outside, uh, 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 again, uh, there were double fireplaces. You had a fireplace that were faced in and a fireplace that faced out, so you, you could go out and cook and do things outside. Inside, extremely simple. Um, in fact, too simple for most of them, most of the time, um, even with California. But, but it was nearer the camping scale. But um, it, 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 the, 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 the thinking behind a, a house of this sort was, was that, that, you know, that you, you had to make it appropriate to the way that you lived. And what was habitable was what you chose to be habitable in. Um, uh, and various, well, they, they, they managed to live in it. And then he worked, uh, uh, most of the time, I think, because Pauline Schindler departed um, to somewhere in San Francisco so for quite a long time, and Schindler had his office, and he worked. He worked for, through the 20s, 30s, 40s, into the 50s, he worked out of this house, and his practice was a one-man practice where he did everything. And he did, he developed a practice that did um, uh, freestanding houses for people of modest means, more modest means than, than uh, um, Losey's clients. But nevertheless, his practice was one of a repetitive 
a, a repetitive design of house types for similar sorts of people in similar sorts of location but with variety. Uh, and, and the thing of having an architectural career in which um, or other uh, architects applying themselves in a way where you, 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 you deal with one particular problem uh, and solve it again and again and again, that you, you learn through that process um, is something I would like to draw your attention to. Um, all right, the inside of what it's like, very other Japanese. This first, I mean, it, it did, when both were all were dead, this house was... Um, was going to be, I mean, because of the value of the land plots around there was, was going to go, but there was a, a campaign that was led and it was saved despite um, um, uh, things going. Uh, one of the interesting things about when it saved was that but the, one of the meetings they had for that, they had people who they thought would be interested in preserving them there. And one of the people they invited there was, a, was an architect who worked for both Neutra, Chinda, and both, both of them called, called Ain. Um, uh, who I've talked to you about actually in the past. Um, and then at that, that thing about when they said what to do with the houses, he said, oh, go, Shinra would, wouldn't want it anymore. He'd, he'd say, pull it down. You, want to keep, you don't want to keep this house. Um, but nevertheless, it has been kept. It is restored. You can go see it. Um, it's, it's not like the rest of Shinra's work when he was working for his clients through those various decades that uh, went on. Um, uh, uh, he developed... He developed a system of linking spaces and designing three-dimensionally with different spaces, which directly derives from LOS, only it's done in completely different de for different sorts of people, for different sorts of budgets, with different sorts of materials. And I'd quite like to talk to you about that at some time, because I did spend some time over there. My son went to live there in the 90s, uh, and I crawled around. But again, the very Japanese part of, of this house. Um, views of the Neutras, uh, uh, Pauline Schinder, her cat doing one of her stairs. This other woman here, Gaia Shoka, she was, uh, uh, a, um, she, uh, was a dealer in modern art, and she basically uh, got Paul Clay's work over to America and shown more on the West Coast than the East Coast and sort of build up a market for him and, uh, and again, other people who, who, who were expected, uh, who were... Um, who were Done afterwards. Um, and I think I'm going to end there. That's Schindler outside his house just before he died. Uh, and that's the picture of uh, Adolf Loos conversing. And I think that's where I want to finish. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Right. We've got a We've got a. Yes. Thank time. you, Philip. Now, would anybody like to? Ask a question. You don't mind ask, uh, answering questions? No, no, not at all, no. Or make a comment? Well, I've been told I always ask questions. So <laughs> right, well, you go for it. Discharge I, I, your I responsibilities. To confirm, I mean, it's obvious, uh, uh, really, but on the plan that there is just one kitchen in that Schindler house that is yes. shared. Yes. Uh, it had doors into it from both sides. Yes. Uh, yes, it did. Yeah. It was a shared kitchen between all the people who were there. Um, uh, and uh, it's small, uh, small kitchen. But on the other hand, um, there were there was an open fireplace outside, and there were barbecues that you have in there. The other question I was, I think it's a charming photo, which I don't think I've ever seen before. But it doesn't show. Um, I mean, uh, I remember Goldfinger saying one of the first thing he said about asked about Adolf Loos and say, stone deaf. And yeah, he was. He, yes, he was, yes. Uh, very deaf and used an ear trumpet. But, so one wonders how these conversations happened in this, in this uh, easy flowing way. Flowing manner, yes. Um, but, but also, he's not actually holding his ear trumpet. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Conundrum. Anybody else got a question? Can I just ask a question about mm. the construction? Mm. Does that house where you have nine different... Levels, yes. Levels. Floors, were they of concrete or timber? Timber, timber, basically timber on the, on the floors. Sometimes he exposed the joists so that uh, uh, usually, usually timber because the, the outside walls would be masonry and there'd always be either a spine wall across the middle in masonry or, or tr if you like, a double spine wall, a cross shaped spine wall so that the, the spans, he. he his things were all designed about the fact that, the, the, that you, you, you could do the span in timber. That was important to him, that you didn't introduce other structural uh, things. 
Just I suspect there's no more questions. So I'm oh. going to close the evening. But before I, I just ask you to thank Philip for his wonderful talk, I'd just like to give a reminder about our next event, yes. which is a talk we're um, hosting by our old friend Neil Jackson on uh, Pierre Koenig. He, he's written the definitive a volume on Pierre Koenig, and we're hosting that, I think, on the 28th of March, oh. if um, I, uh, I remember well. Anyway, we'd love to see you all either here or uh, on Zoom, and um, thank you for, for, I mean, you've woven together an extraordinary tale of two, three architects tonight, Blue yep. Shindland, Philip Boyle. Well, no, no, but, but, but the, 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 uh, the main thing is, is actually dealing with space. You know? Yes, absolutely. Dealing with space. Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, um, uh, and, and I'm trying to say that Adapo started it all off, that, that, that Corbusier would not really have, I think, had so, well, it, he helped Corbusier have the self confidence to, to, to pour out the L'Esprit Nouveau stuff that got us all going on modernism. So, more important than people realise, I think. That is the reason I think my yes, attention yes. should be paid well, thank, to. Thank I haven't you. done it particularly well, actually. But th th these are very difficult things to describe. I think we'll be the judge of that, if oh, you don't mind me saying so. Anyway, thank you, Philip. Thank you.